My entitled mother-in-law demands more and more money from all of her sons, claiming that they never give her any money and that she's going to starve and go hungry if she doesn't get $50 a month from each of her sons. But after watching this on the sidelines, I finally decided that enough was enough, setting the record straight for everybody involved and finally saying that my mother-in-law is incredibly greedy. Here's what happened. So my mother-in-law has asked for money since the first day I met her. She was a stay-at-home mom for most of her life and had four sons with two two different men. Both ex-husbands have passed away, so now she reaches out to her sons for money. My boyfriend and I live together and have been together for two years. In that time, he has paid her cell phone bill regularly, given her $500, sent her random amounts of money between $50 to $100, bought her things for her home like a toaster, a new comforter, etc., and even brought her food. And most of the time, she doesn't even say thank you. Now, my boyfriend and I are comfortable, but we are not rich. I'm a freelance tutor, and he's a security guard. We are tight, but we make do. For a year, my mother-in-law has been pushing him to agree to give her $50 a month. She thinks if each son gives her $50, then she can have $200 a month. But I just don't understand the need for this extra money. The government helps pay for her apartment, and she gets social security and pension. Between her four sons, they pay for her home goods, and another son pays for her hair and her nail appointments, while another takes her out to eat all the time. But no matter what she receives, she always insists on getting more. Now, fast forward, and yesterday was my boyfriend's birthday, and today is my mother-in-law's birthday. Because they are so close in days, and we both work today, we brought her a birthday cake last night to celebrate both birthdays together. Now, she had prepared nothing for my boyfriend, not even a card, but was happy to accept the cake that we brought her. Things were actually okay until we finished eating, and she brought up money again. She said that she complained to her friend about how she has four sons, and how only one of them helps her, which is so untrue since I have a record at this point of everything that anyone has bought her. She said her friend would be calling my sons because apparently $50 is nothing to us, but it's a lot to her. So I decided to ask, well, when you decided to have four children, what was your plan for when you got to this age? She literally looked at me and said that she didn't have one. So I said, oh, okay. And why do you think $50 is nothing to your son? How can anyone say $50 is nothing to anyone with the cost of living these days? She responded back, by saying, yes, but would you let your mother go hungry? But I responded by saying, no, I wouldn't, but your sons haven't let you go hungry. And I'm even actually really surprised that on your son's birthday, when he brought you a cake on his birthday, actually came to your house and you didn't get him anything. Not even a card. You're just so comfortable sitting here making him feel bad for not giving you money. Now, I looked to my boyfriend, but he did not stop me, so I kept going. So I said, at 31 years old, do you think your son and I don't want to start our own family? but we know we can't do that economically and we don't want to burden our kids with that in the future. Well, when I said that, she lost it. And as a result, I'm now apparently banned from the family, even though my boyfriend is 100% on my side. So honestly, am I the jerk for telling my mother-in-law exactly how it is? What should I do? Wow, the mother-in-law in this story is a really terrible mother. You're telling me that she had no plan for retirement at all? Like she wasn't setting any money aside or anything and her plan was just to try and like mooch off of her sons for the rest of her life? Like, that is really irresponsible, and that's awful for your kids to have to deal with. But you know what? It really seems like the original poster said what everybody was thinking, because I totally agree with them. This mother-in-law is going to sit there and act like she's starving, and yet she's definitely not starving at all. Like, she has all of her needs met by literally all of her sons, and yet she's still begging for more, acting like she has nothing left in her life, and that she has no money coming in from the government or from her pension. Like, she sounds super entitled and really selfish, and I don't blame you for saying exactly what needs to be said because this mother-in-law absolutely had it coming and it was only a matter of time before you or somebody else set her straight. If you like Am I the Jerk, you're probably going to love Am I the Genius. Check it out, link down below in the description. Also, go to amithejerk.com slash submit if you would like to submit your own stories. Am I the Jerk for asking my neighbor to shut their doors when their infant is having a meltdown? Here's what happened. So I live in an apartment which is on one of two buildings on the same block of land. The other building has an apartment with a young family with two children. One is about three years old and they have a new infant of less than a year. During COVID lockdowns, the three-year-old was an infant and he cried all the time. The noise would reverberate between the buildings into all the apartments on our side and it really upset everybody in the building, but we all just kind of let it slide. Now they have a new infant that just like the other one is constantly crying, whining, and moaning at all hours, but they keep their doors and windows open so the sound 
sound travels straight into our apartments. I get along famously with all the neighbors, and they've all said they're getting fed up with the noise as well. We agreed that if they just shut their doors while the infant is shrieking, it would take some of the edge off of the noise. The other thing is that they let their kids stay up very late. It'll be 11 o'clock p.m., and I will still hear the three-year-old banging on toys and the infant chiming in with an attention-seeking whine. So it seems like the kids are probably not sleeping a normal schedule and are irritable throughout the day, hence they are crying all the time. Now, for further backstory, I've been recovering from a brain tumor, and I am more sensitive to noise than I would be normally. So when a kid shrieks, I really feel it deeply. I'm also getting my career back on track and working from home, and I can't count the number of times the little demon spawn has screamed uncontrollably while I was on a video call or a regular phone call. In general, all our neighbors are generally pretty good about speaking up when something is bothering them. I mean, we don't do the passive-aggressive thing, and we all really appreciate directness. So I crossed paths with a mother of the kids the other day, and I was very polite and friendly. I then told her that I know it must be tough with young kids at home, but I then asked her if she'd be kind enough to shut the doors for times when the kids are screaming, and then reopen them when they settle down. Well, when I said that, she just sort of looked at me really awkwardly and was like, okay then, which really translated to, how dare you ask me that? Now, I've been hesitant to make a bigger deal out of this, even though it's single-handedly disrupting the vibe across 17 other apartments. I honestly don't have an issue with the kids, because I know kids are gonna cry. The issue is that the parents don't seem to care about other residents and are not interested in working with any of us. So honestly, am I the jerk for even suggesting a solution to the mom? What should I do? I don't think you're the jerk, and honestly, I think you did this the nice way. You very easily could have been petty and gone to, like, the apartment manager or someone over the building and been like, hey, this lady's keeping her windows open and it's bothering all of us when her kids cry. And then you could have just gotten them in trouble that way instead of, like, coming to them personally. Like, there's a lot of ways this could have gone, and I think you picked the nicest option. And here's the thing. It's not just you that's complaining about this. It is literally, what, 17 other apartments basically saying the same thing? They all feel the exact same way that you do, and they really want this lady to shut the window and the doors and just shut up in general. So no, you are definitely not the jerk. This is something that needed to be said because her negligence is bothering the entire neighborhood. An entitled customer comes in right at closing, taking as much time as he can to shop our store and then taking forever to get his stuff and get out. And I'm honestly so annoyed and I really hope I never have to deal with this ever again. Here's what happened. So I had a guy come in last minute last night at the convenience store I work closing shifts for. Usually it's not an issue. They're usually in and out really fast, but I was literally fetching the key to lock the doors when the guy in question came in. So I have to wait for him to finish before I can shut down. But again, I don't think much of it because usually last minute stragglers are really quick. But unfortunately, this guy absolutely was not. Between him practically inspecting every single item we had on our shelves, as well as him saying, wait, I need to get more things over three times after coming to the register and then wanting to keep chatting after he had paid and had his stuff bagged. And despite me being non-receptive, it was almost another 15 minutes past closing time. I mean, I've done everything I could to not give him a reason to keep chatting or even trying to be polite and just nudge him out the door, but it was all to no avail. He then went on to ask me, so what time do you close anyways? And I responded by saying that we were supposed to close 15 minutes ago, hoping that he would finally get the message and get out. But this guy just laughed and then he kept talking and said, oh, you guys close early. When I worked retail, we would stay open until midnight. And then he tried to go on a tangent about how things were when he was a retail worker. I ended up having to be blunt, straight up telling him that if he's done shopping, then I'll need him to leave so we can finally close. He, of course, got sour after that because, of course, it's terrible customer service. It's small and mostly inconvenient, but my God, it is so infuriating when people know that it's past or close to closing time and they still want to hang out and waste my time. Yeah, I know exactly what the original poster is talking about here because I've experienced this myself. You have a customer that you really want to get out the door, but they're sitting there just being like, oh yeah, this is a great time to talk. Meanwhile, you're like really wanting to leave. Like you really desperately want to go home. You've worked 12 hours and the last thing you want to do is deal with this idiot. And it seems like, at least in my experience, the more you talk to these people, the more they think, oh yeah, it's totally fine that I'm here right now holding you up. It's like, dude, it's midnight. I don't want to talk to you right now. I want to get in my car and go home and sleep because I got to open the next day. Like, are you kidding? So yeah, I totally understand where they're coming from and I also cannot stand when customers act that way. Am I the jerk for refusing to house my cousin in my apartment after my extended family imposes and pretty much demands that he lives with 
with me in New York City. Because right now, I am very frustrated. And at this point, I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. So my cousin recently got into New York University, and I'm so proud of him. My mom told me when I invited her over for dinner a couple of weeks ago. She then brought up that he could live with me instead of dorming. She brought it up in a casual, joking manner. So I laughed and said that I can't live with that drama queen for the life of me. She shrugged it off, and she didn't bring up the topic again that night. Almost four days later, I get a call from my aunt, and she reiterated what my mother said, and said that she was so grateful for what I was doing for my cousin. I went silent for a little bit, and then I asked her what she meant by that. My aunt said that I had agreed to take my cousin in and let him live with me for his academic career. Now, I was shocked at first, and I told her that I never agreed to that. She then said to me, I know, but he's your cousin. The least you can do is let him stay at your apartment. And now that I type this out, it does sort of seem innocent, but in that moment, it really angered me. I lost my cool and I told her that I don't owe anybody anything and then I hung up the phone. Now, I will admit, I didn't handle that in the best manner and I could have been a lot calmer, but I really don't want someone to live with me. I live by myself in a two-bedroom apartment. I already pay a lot for rent and have a very tight budget for food. Even if his parents offer to pay for his expenses, such as food and transportation, I still wouldn't want him living with me. Shortly after my blow up with my aunt, a few of my family members began blowing up my phone, saying that I'm being selfish and jealous of my cousin's success. My uncle texted me that I'm ruining his son's life and ranted about how self-absorbed I am. Now, to be frank, I don't care what he or anyone else in my family tells me about this situation, and there's a reason I try to avoid them at family functions. What makes me wonder if I'm the jerk is when my mother said that I was being unfair and that I'll open my apartment door for one night stands, but not for her own family. I told her that she can have a say in who I let in my apartment when she starts paying my rent. And as of right now, I'm contemplating blocking my mom as well. Part of me feels like I'm being a jerk, and the other part of me feels like it's my apartment, so I shouldn't be bullied into anything I don't want to do. I'm not mad at my cousin because he is a kid, but I'm really mad at everyone else in my family taking his parents and mom's side of the story. My dad has been very supportive of my decision and is reprimanding my mom and her family about the whole situation. So honestly, am I the jerk in this scenario? What should I do? You are not the jerk in this situation, and I think I would lose my mind if someone tried to be like, oh yeah, you're letting your cousin live with you. Especially if they didn't ask me ahead of time about that. Like if they just assumed that, oh, we're family, so I'm going to let them in, then they've got a rude awakening coming their way. And I feel the exact same way. I wouldn't want someone living with me like that, especially if this is family that you actively try to avoid at family reunions. And based on the way they're acting, I don't blame you at all for not wanting anything to do with them. Here they are not getting exactly what they want, so they turn this all around on you, all because you said no to their imposition. Like, if the aunt had called in and been like, hey, could you actually let my son stay with you, or something like that, I think there could have been more of a chance for some kind of dialogue between the original poster and their extended family, and we could have avoided this entire mess. But instead, they just assumed, oh yeah, you're gonna let him in there because we say so. Like, that is super toxic, and there's no way I would ever let that fly if I was in your shoes. And it's just so beautiful and it's like icing on the cake that everyone's trying to guilt trip you and gaslight you as if you're the problem here. But it's like, really? Are you kidding me right now? You're trying to force my cousin to live with me without asking me first. And you've got it right, by the way. You pay for rent in a two-bedroom apartment in New York City. Like, that's not cheap. That is really expensive. And there's no way I'm gonna let someone just move in with me all of a sudden. So no, you are definitely not the jerk. Anyone who says that you're the jerk is actually the jerk. And I don't blame you for wanting to distance yourself from this side of your family. I live with my aunt and uncle for three months, and I literally could not stand their spoiled, rotten children. And I now hope I never have to deal with them ever again. Here's what happened. So I live with my aunt and uncle for three months due to work changes, and they have two boys. One is 13 and the other is six. And they have to be the most entitled, narcissistic, spoiled brats I have ever met. The 13-year-old is incredibly lazy. He doesn't clean up after himself, which leaves the parents to think the rest of us must clean their son's mess. He throws temper tantrums like a two-year-old about not getting what he wants. And the one night, I came home late at 9 o'clock p.m. from work just to find my chargers and cords missing because he took my extension cord to use those for LED lights. Obviously, I took it back because I need to charge my phone for work tomorrow. And the next morning, he started screaming and crying and breaking things because I unplugged his lights. And the six-year-old is the devil reincarnated. I know he's just a kid, but frankly, I don't care about excuses that let children treat people like garbage. He goes through all my bags, my suitcases, my personal belongings to find money. He looks for candy.
candies, all of my books, and no matter what he finds, he just takes it. He opened up my makeup bag and squeezed out all the makeup. He took my toothbrush and covered it in toothpaste and put the protective cover back on. And when I complain about any of this, he nags that I don't share with him as if he's entitled to everything in front of him. Then one day when I was getting food to eat, he started yelling at me by screaming, don't eat my food. You're eating all my food. Even though this food was not his in the first place. And then to top it all off, he spat on me. He spits on people when he doesn't get what he wants. So I told his mother and all she did was say, don't do it again. Then the next day they told me to buy him sweets to make it up to him. Because apparently you have to buy his love. I mean, this was just pathetic parenting. They throw a fit even if you raise your voice at their kids too. He's just a little narcissist. And he even cried last night because I didn't say thank you to him for getting me a chocolate. Even though I bought the chocolate for myself. I honestly can't stand these kids and I hope I don't have to deal with them ever again. I'm going to be the first one to say it and maybe this is a mean take. But sometimes kids literally are the worst people on the planet. This is not a sweeping statement so please don't take this the wrong way. But if you raise your kids wrong and they turn into these little monsters, then these are the type of people that are just so awful to deal with. Like there's literally no reasoning with kids like these because they just throw a fit over anything and everything. They've never been told no their entire life. They think the world belongs to them. And God forbid you tell them no because they're going to make your life a living nightmare. And worst of all, this is all learned behavior. This is reinforcement from the parents not doing their job. Like if they just took the time to work out any of these bad habits and try to teach them to have responsibility and all this other stuff, then they really could have avoided all of this mess. Like, I can only imagine what the teachers of these kids must have to deal with on a daily basis. Especially the six-year-old. The six-year-old really makes my skin crawl because he's at that age where, like, literally you can't reason with them and you just can't have a conversation of any kind. And there's no, like, middle ground in the slightest. And without, like, some kind of punishment or, like, the parents getting involved, you will literally not get anything done around this child. So, honestly, I think I speak for all of us when I say I hope you really don't live with him anymore because that sounds like an absolute nightmare and I know if I was in your shoes I would seriously be miserable living under that roof. My husband keeps ruining my birthday and today was no exception as he invited my mom who is very emotionally distant from me and now I feel like my day is ruined and I seriously don't know what to do. Here's what happened. Okay so for starters today is my birthday and I'm turning 41 years old and my husband of 19 years can be a bit of a jerk. His awful behavior is few and far between though and most of the time we get along we love each other he cleans up around the house and he's ready to jump in and do whatever needs to get done with the kids generally he is a good husband with some very bad qualities now the problem arises when we try to resolve conflict and he gets extremely defensive to the point of aggression for example last year on my birthday I apparently didn't tell him clearly enough what I wanted to do while we planned the event and he then ended up snapping at me and then refusing to speak to me and I ended up crying and driving myself and our kids to the trampoline park, which is where we wanted to go in the first place. But this year, I was clear. I said I wanted to do the pool or another type of adventure park by us. And this is a place that's similar to like Dave and Buster's, but there's also like a zip line. Well, when I said that, he said, oh, don't plan anything. He has a surprise for me. While I was out running a quick errand with my daughter today, he told me to come home because the surprise was almost there. And what was the surprise, you might be asking? It was the fact that he invited invited my mother over for the day. Now, my mother and I are not close. She is emotionally cold and distant all the way to the point that she can be very rude to me and he knows our relationship is unfulfilling at best and disappointing at worst. She will sometimes just pretend I'm not speaking and start talking to someone else while I'm mid-sentence. We don't spend time together and my husband doesn't really like her either and so far, he has spent the day giving us 20 minutes at the table having cake and then he went to our hot tub alone and now he's downstairs playing some video games. I'm now stuck up here with my mom who will probably stay until bedtime. I feel like my day is ruined again and I'm seething mad. In all fairness to him, he did buy me flowers and several pieces of coach jewelry even though I don't really wear jewelry which he already knows that. I feel like he threw money at it, invited my mom to babysit me so he can now do whatever he wants. I mean, how do I bring this up without causing a raging argument? I feel angry and overlooked and I feel like I was handled and then bailed on. What should I do? Yeah, it really seems like your husband did not set you up with a good birthday, but instead it almost seems like a punishment. Like he knows for a fact that you and your mom do not get along, and yet he still invited her on your birthday? Like is he being serious right now? Like that just completely sucks. Like there is literally no good excuse for any of that. So yeah, if I was in your shoes, I would definitely be having a conversation
conversation with him and I would be saying exactly what's on my mind because this guy literally ruined your birthday by bringing your mom over. And the worst part about it is that I think he did it on purpose. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell to turn on notifications. To finish listening to all the stories, check out the playlist at the top of the description. And if you want some chill music to put on in the background, check out easymode.com. If you like Am I the Jerk, subscribe to Am I the Genius. Everything will be linked down below in the description.